All right, all right, family. Black Power is the general. We live. Y'all know what time it is. We about to get busy with some very powerful information dealing with African spirituality. Spirituality uh, today. Uh, KingSeti.com online marketplace. The official general Sarasu Seti web uh, marketplace. T-shirts and hoodies, DVDs, classic lectures, uh, African and comedic jewelry for the family looking for that royal divine jewelry that's going to empower you. Uh, we got uh, uh, tonics, holistic tonics and remedies for the family out there. They're trying to keep their immune system strong, keeping their mind and bo body strong. Come on over there, check us out, get some of them holistic tonics and remedies. We got art and home decor. I got some powerful, powerful products over there. You know what I'm saying? We got 15% off for the family going over there. Get you a discount and get you some, some very lovely and beautiful products. You see what I'm saying? Also, y'all know what time it is. Ring the alarm. Dropping bombs on GeneralSeti.com. You see, uh, y'all know uh, on GeneralSeti.com, we got over 800 videos and uh, lectures. You know, too raw for YouTube, the making of the Crow Magnum white man. You see right there, the rise of the Neanderthal video library series catalog, all religions, uh, uh, Judaism, Islam, Chris Christianity, Hinduism, that ism and the other isms. Uh, the black woman is God, uh, gas, global African supremacy, black economics and education. And so we got a lot of information on that site that you need is, is and it's raw revolutionary information that you ain't going to get nowhere else on the planet. You ain't going to get it nowhere else. Not like that. You ain't going to get it, period. I ain't going to even, you know, and make it up and say you ain't going to get it like that. You ain't going to get it nowhere else. And so you get on over there, GeneralSETI.com, SETI University, get that work. Also, my Patreon, uh, General Sarasu and Sadi, the hardest goddamn Patreon on the planet. Exclusive live streams by the General Hot Topics. You won't see on YouTube. I just dropped this when Hazus Amon became the comedic devil. This is an uh, uncut version. I even got the cut version on my Patreon. I put the cut version on uh on YouTube, they couldn't even take the cut version. So you already know how that uncut version is. It ain't nothing but smoke. So you get on over there to my Patreon, uh, over 150 exclusive live streams, and then I go I go live on Patreon. So you get to see the general, you know, up, the only other place other than YouTube or one of my pay-per-view live streams where you get to see the general live. You feel what I'm saying? And so you want that work. So get on over there, Patreon, General Sarasu and Seti. Now, we got this uh, live stream coming up. We got this live stream coming up. June, Sunday, June 19th. Y'all know what it is, the three wicked sons of Abraham. Oh, my God. It's going down. I'm going in all their mouth. It's a must-see. It's a must -see. It's a must see. You see, uh, the uh, general city dot ticket league dot com. Uh, you can go to uh, the video description and, and hit that link and get your ticket and guarantee you, you're not going to see none of this nowhere on this level. And so if you need that, that work and you need that information, you should be in the house. Do not miss it. You see? Matter of fact, let me put it in there. It's at the bottom. Uh, ticket Lee, uh, gen uh, Ticket Lee, dot, uh, General Study dot Ticket Lee dot com. You go there and you see all my uh, upcoming lectures. And this one, I can't wait for. I can't wait for because I'm gonna really show up. Okay, and make sure that you got, uh, you know, y'all subscribe to all my YouTube channels. Channels General Study, Sarah Soon Study. And King set. Rock that uh uh rock that uh, notification bell so you know when I'm going live, get a video, a thumbs up, like it because you love it, and share it with your family. Now today we're gonna be dealing with one of the great netters. 
one of the, one of the great deities of ancient Egypt, the great god Anubis, Lord of the underworld. You see, Lord of the underworld. Let's get this. Let's let's get it going. And so, right there. And so, you know, a lot of you know a lot of people see you know Anubis and uh. They really don't understand his place in the pantheon, uh, and I don't, I don't want to use that term, in, in the college of African deities in ancient Egypt. Uh, actually, uh, Anubis was the, uh, the deity, the, the god of the underworld before Osiris. He was the god of the underworld before Osiris. In the root of his name, you will find uh, the source of where this deity came from, you see Anu, okay, Anu, and that, the Anu is symbolic of the little Twa, the little Twa, the little African people, you understand, that, uh, that came out the interior of Africa, many of them still live around the Great Lakes region, still living around uh, so-called Lake Victoria, criminally renamed Lake Victoria. There is no Victorias in Africa, okay? So, you know, I say that only if you go to the map and I need you to find it. That's why I'm saying that, but be very clear that there are no, we, we must take all European names of all for, you know, things that belong to African people. And after this generation, we should have, re-educated ourselves into African terminology and take that bitch name clean up out of our teachings because there is no goddamn Victorias in Africa. That's a, a, a wicked a, a slave master colonizer genocide master of genocide that went into Africa and killed tens of millions if not hundreds of millions of Africans that one particular nation Britain you see and so we're, let's deal with this, uh, the root of Anubis coming up out the Anu, the first people of Egypt. You see, and if you go to a particular, uh, it's called Terranetta. Okay, now who is Terranetta? It's a little, a little uh, carving that was found at the Temple of Abaddon. And it showed, as you see, the little twa depicted on that. And it showed that, you know, that they not only were they the first people of Egypt, that they were also uh, followers of Set. See, people don't understand that. And I had to run this down because they're so busy listening to these, 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 these wannabe Egyptologists who really don't have, you know, our people's best interests at heart. And so, you know, they'll teach you anything. And if you don't go and do your own research, you will end up falling for a lot of this misinformation. And so when you see that Set was the supreme deity before uh, many of the gods that you see, Osiris Set was a supreme deity before Osiris. Set was a supreme deity amongst the Nile Valley Africans before Heru, okay? That's why when you look at the first known of Egypt is Taseti. Taseti. You see, and you see this term in, in many of our set. You see, even in our set, the show it, it, that she's the uh, uh, the lady of the South, because set is also synonymous with South. And so you see the Anu when they came up and set, and you know, and uh, Anubis was considered to be the son of set. You see. And so it's almost like how you got Osiris and you got Heru, you, it, the, uh, uh, the original was Set and Anubis, okay? You see Set and Anubis. And so this is where you get the root of his name, the prefix of his name. So we see that off the, out the gate that Anubis is one of our ancient uh, Nubian deities, okay? When you look on, you know, you see uh, this is the... Uh, uh, Papyrus of Hunafa. I don't even know if I spelled that right. Let me make sure I, you know, because I'm always going so quick. Okay, I spelled that wrong. 
Yeah, okay, I spelled that wrong. Let me get that right. Well, I did that. Let me get. It. And so, you know, he he Anubis here is acting as the baby. He's one, you know, and you know, he's got many great roles, but he's acting as the bailiff. And if you you understand the court system, and this is exactly where the Western world, you know, stole the uh, court system designed from from ancient Egypt. You see that Anubis is leading, uh, he's leading the uh, the soul, the spirit into the courtroom. Let me see if I can. Let me let me see if I can. Uh, Let me see if I can get a picture of the back. Okay. These wicked motherfuckers, you know. But see, these are now, you know, I, so I don't want to, uh, you know, and so let me put this one in here. And I don't want to depict, you know, uh, uh, I don't want to depict Anubis, but this is where they get their system from. Okay, so when you see here, see this the baby. You see he leading in, and but we we're not talking about a prisoner. We're talking about a soul. You see, and so he's acting as, as the baby. You see he's leading in. You see uh Tahuti acting as the court reporter, and not only is he he's checking the scale. He's checking the scale, you know, to make sure that the soul gets a fair shake. You see, he's making sure that uh, Anubis is the gatekeeper. In in the Nordic in the Nordic uh, deity system, he would be very similar to him. Die. He would be very similar to him. Die. Who is the gatekeeper? Nobody can get in and out of Asgard without, you know. The permission of Hamdale. And so, you know, he, he's acting as the gatekeeper into the courtroom of the goddess Ma, you see, at coming in, and, and, you know. And so you see the priests of Anubis were master surgeons. And so when we talk about that, you know, because you're talking about Anubis was the god of resurrection. He was the god, uh, I mean, the god of embalm. He was the uh, he was the deity of embalming, which was one of the most uh, uh, profound rituals and ceremonies in all of ancient Egypt. You know, this is why they had so many scrolls about the afterlife. You know what I'm saying? And so his role in in the process of embalming, uh, the opening of the mouth ceremony, you know, was so you know was ascribed to this great deity anubis and so when you start talking about you know anubis you are you you not you 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 not only talking about you know spirituality you also talking about medicine i had a uh i had a uh a visual in there i don't know where it went i don't know where it went but it didn't seem to just disappear up out of here Oh, here you go, right here. Anubis, Lord of Priestly Surgeons. And so, you know, you know, because he was the god of embalming, you know what I'm saying, which required the, the surgeons, the physicians of ancient Egypt to cut open the body. They understood all of the workings of the body, the organs, you see, the organs, the, 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 the flow of the blood, uh, of the blood, you know, and, you know, and the brain. And so th these are the first surgeons and uh, physicians on the planet. And so Anu Anubis is also connected to medicine. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that. And so, you know, uh, we have to bring that forth that, you know, it ain't all just spirituality. It is it's a combination of, of a lot of great sciences. You see, and so when we look at Anubis, we also look at the fact that he's a, a great symbol of, of physicians and medicines. In, in ancient uh, Greece, 
which, which, which was very uh like you know funny to me to find out that Anubis is also uh in the Greek mythology equivalent to Hermes, okay, Mercury, in which you get the caduceus. You see, and so there we see that even in the Greek Greco-Roman mythology, you know, Anubis is connected to medicine. Okay, and so you see right there, Anubis is the is the gatekeeper to the uh, judgment hall of my eye, in which the heart was uh, weighed on the scale, you know, which which was weighed on the scale, and we we'll go through some of the verses in the Bible that speak directly to that. Matter of fact, where they at? We'll get to them. We'll get to them. We'll get to them. Matter of fact, let me see some. Let me bring them up right now, because they, they should have been on in there. I know they're in there with my eye. And so you see right there, Nubis got a, a very uh, profound connection even to the goddess my eye, because that's the scale that he's checking. He right there, both came right to him. You see, so you see right there in the Bible, Proverbs 11, 1, it says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. What Lord? You see, but a just weight is his delight. You see, so when you look in there and you say the Lord, you know, what Lord? You talking about, is it Anubis? Is it Lord Anubis? A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. So you know what he's doing? He's checking. You understand what I'm saying? A false balance can also be a balance that is not been checked to be even. And so you, you that means you didn't get a person a fair shake. You understand what I'm saying? Also, it could be that the, the balance, the scale has been checked and the heart did not weigh as light as a feather. You see? And so that's also a false balance. But a just weight is his delight. So you see right there how profoundly uh, Anubis and Ma'at has influenced even the writers, even the writers of the Bible. You see, and so we talking about here the spiritual supreme court administering divine law. You see, and so you see where Tehuti is the court report. He's the court reporter. And you see right there again, you see Anubis is tugging. Did I put it in there? Yes, it's in there. You see Anubis is tugging the uh the plum the line uh, on the scale to make sure. And he got the plumb line right there and making sure that is it is it, it, even. You know that you know when it start out that you're getting a fair shape, that ain't no up and down. See, when you go into the uh the European when you go into the European court, you already know that motherfucker going to be uneven for your ass. You already know you are you going to get you, you, you as soon as you step through the goddamn door, you already here we go right here. It says, you know, right there. So when you see right there, you see that European goddamn pro magnum bitch up there with the scale. See, they put the scale, they put the blindfold around their eyes. See? You know, and the reason why they're going to tell you just because they say justice is blind. No, it ain't that justice blind. They know the scale is uneven. They already know the scale. And so the blindfold is their excuse that they didn't see that the motherfucker was uneven. So they know that. So when you go into, you know, and you look at the scale in the hall of my eye, it's always even. You see, it's always even. You're getting a just. You're getting a just a uh, 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 court proceeding. Your 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 spirit is getting judged fairly. You see what I'm saying? The balance is fair and it's even. So you know, but when you go in that European room, you already know that motherfucker's uneven. And so the reason why they got the blindfold on, so they got an excuse on not knowing that the uh, uh, the scale was uneven. And so whatever needs to be done, you must close your eyes until the mission is complete. You see what I'm saying? That means whatever they got to do to stay in control, that's what must be done. Put the blindfold on, however many motherfuckers 
you got to kill, however many motherfuckers you got to lock up, however motherfuckers you got to falsely accuse to stay in power, then thy will be done. You see, and so this is exactly where, where they got the system of, of judicial system from. But, you know, the only thing is they don't have no morality in their system. Their system is only for control. It's not for justice. It's not for no moral standards or none of that. It's only for control. And so when you even when you uh, come in and you talk about my you see right there, Anubis is also, you know, you know, checking the scale of my eye. You see my eye at the top of the scale with uh with the feather on her head. And you see that, you know, we talk about my eye as the, the, the goddess of, of law, of truth, justice, and law. And so when you when you go and you see also when you look at uh, the Ark of the Covenant, you see the Ark of the Covenant, which you know was a chest that contained the law of supposed God who had handed it down to Moses on Mount Sinai. And then you come right into Africa and you see at the chest, the chest of, uh, of Tutankhamun, you see the goddesses, uh, uh, you know, with the with the, uh, wings touches, the first symbols of, 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 of a, a, a angel ever, on the planet Earth, they are the original guardian angels. You see that 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 shrine right there held the sarcophagus of King uh, uh, Tut, and so they were the guardian angels of the soul of King Tut to make sure that you know that he got to the afterlife and and without being uh harmed by any type of demons or anything of that nature. So this is where you get the Ark of the Covenant from. This is where you get the Ark of the Covenant from. And so you come here to the, the judgment hall of my to be to, for your car, your heart to be judged that the heart is to be weighed. You know, because your heart is a recorder of all your deeds. So ain't no goddamn like in Christianity you can do you can do dirt all your life, and then when you get ready to die, you ask the Lord to forgive you. You cannot do that. Your heart is weighed, and so your heart must be as light as a feather. And so when you come to uh, many of the tombs, you see that uh, Anubis is also considered uh, a guardian of the tomb. You see, he's a guardian of the tomb. He's going to be one that protects your spirit. You know, he's going to be he's going to protect your cop. And so he's looked at as one of uh, the most uh, uh, important of all the deities in respect to salvation in the afterlife. You see, when you see here also, uh, he's, he's considered uh, a guardian of the valley of the kings and queens. He's he's called the, 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 uh, the guardian of the necropolis. You see, and so he 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 sits up on a high mountain top, looking down to be, you know, in case he's needed. He can see all things at all times. And so if anyone is to try to come in and pillage and you know your grave, then Anubis would be that divine protector that will protect your temple, will protect your tomb from any uh invaders. Anubis was always depicted black. Uh, depicted black, the color of divinity. So he was one of them. And so when you look at this God, they call him a Pharaoh, huh? You know, they are, uh, many people say they don't, they don't even come black like that. And so the fact is that black was the highest color of divinity. You see, he was the highest color of divinity. And so he was always depicted black. Now, uh, you also see here, you know, he guarded, you know, when they went into uh, King Tut's tomb, he was there guarding the tomb. This is the original photo, you know, and so when they came down into the tomb, they saw Anubis right there, guard. You know what I'm saying? And he's looked at, now he's looked at as uh, the son of Osiris. You have many other uh, 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 spiritual stories with Anubis being the son of, uh, of Osiris, 
You know what I'm saying? When you look at Orion being the great hunter, uh, uh, the, then you got Cirrus being the dog star. And so uh, Cirrus would have been, you know, along with the great hunter of Orion, uh, Anubis would have been the guardian dog or the or the hunter, the, the, uh, the dog of the great hunter. And so you see him right there protecting, protecting the tomb of the great uh, African king, King Tut. And so you see right there. So you got to be, you, you most definitely got to give a shout out to uh, Anubis because you damn sure need him on your side. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, he's the opener. You know, he opens up your mouth in the afterlife. You know what I'm saying? You can't even speak. You know what I'm saying? Until he come and open up your mouth. So you got to have Anubis on your side at all times. You know what I'm saying? He's he's a he's also a guardian angel. You know what I'm saying? And if if, if you you know if you you look you know does it ain't weighing so much? You know what I'm saying? Anubis, you know it could you know put in a couple good words for you. You know what I'm saying? Put in a couple good words for you and get you on through. You see, and so you all they always give you know a veneration to the great God Anubis. And so you see right there when we're talking about Orion, now uh, Sirius is also sacred to Isis. You know what I'm saying? But some of these stars got multiplicity of, of sacred connections. And so Sirius is also called the dog star. You see, it's also called the dog star, which is uh, symbolic of Anubis. And Anubis and uh, Isis was uh, connected in, in a sense also because Anubis was the one that put Osiris's body back together after he was cut up. You see, after he was cut up, it was Anubis that put uh, the body of Osiris. So he was also a protector, you know, and, and, you know, and also fought on the side of uh, of Isis and Osiris, he was uh, an uh, ally, but also he was considered in later uh, uh, in later uh, spiritual stories to be a son of Osiris. Originally, he was the son of Set. You see, originally he was the son of Set. Okay, the ancient Egyptians believed that their god of the dead, Anubis who was the god of the dead before Osiris, was the inventor of embalming. This piece of art shows the jackal-headed Anubis preparing a mummy. It dates from uh, 13, 14 to 1200 BC, okay? It's 1200 BC. Uh, the ancient Egyptians believed their pharaoh's body had to remain intact in order to reach the afterlife. So they took elaborate steps to ensure the ruler's body would not decompose. The Egyptians developed a special embalming process called mummification. It go back thousands of years before ancient Egypt. Thousands of years, and people are not de dealing with this fact. You know, and, you know, they were they didn't find mummies thousands of years older than ancient Egypt. So it was a process. But as you know, it got into ancient Egypt, it got far more elaborate. You see, far more elaborate. So when you get to talking about the mummy of Lazarus and you know, and, you know, and, and the mummy of Jesus, say they wrapped him in swaddling and this, that, and the third. But yet and still, if 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 the Israelites were so uh, you know, and they say they was in Egypt for 400 years, and the Arabs and shit, they want to pretend that they were ancient, they the ancient Egyptians. Ask them where are the bodies of their ancestors. You see, if the Israelites spent 400 years in Egypt, where are the bodies of their ancestors? They should have been very skilled in embalming, and yet we don't find no bodies, even though they show you Jesus wrapped in swaddling, even though they show you Lazarus. Uh, uh, wrapped in swaddling as if he had been mummified, yet and still we do not see any um, mummies or any bodies. You see what I'm saying? And so when we're dealing with mummification, 
we are dealing with the great deity of Anubis, who was the founder of this, this great science of spirituality that is, is so important. It's so important, you know, that all the royalty who could afford it, and even down to the average individual who could not, they still went through is a great, you know, a pain to make sure that they had the right ritualisms and right ceremonies at the time of their death, you know, and so that they could see uh, the afterlife. The Pharaoh's mummified body was stuffed for about 40 days to drain any fluids. When the stuffing was removed, the body was very dry and smaller than in life. It was again stuffed, packed with, and covered in jewels. As a final step, the mummy was wrapped in about 20 layers of linen. Okay, and so, uh, you know, just to show how profound that this science was, you can still find bodies, you know, even to this day, it's six and seven thousand years after, you know, the body was put in the ground. You see, and so you see here, uh, this is with, uh, I believe, that very well might have been King Tut. You know, and you see right there, Anubis giving him life. You see right there, Anubis giving him life, putting the honk in his mouth. You see what I'm saying? So that he could live again. And so you see right there, he, uh, Anubis is a, 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 a giver of life. He is, he is a giver of life. Again, we see right here, Anubis check. And so, you know, checking the plumb line, you, you already know that that's a, a Masonic, you know, and so Anubis, is, you know, has a, a, a Freemason background, you know, whether they want to, you know, give credit or not, we don't need them, need them to give credit. And you see right there, you see Osar Ptah there, you see Osar Ptah, the, the combination of Osar and Ptah, you see the black deity of the underworld right there. And also you see, you know, uh, Anubis was connected to the uh, four sons of Horus, M. Seti, you know, and so when the uh, surgeons, the, the surgeons are cutting open the body and they're taking out the organs, you see M. Seti is the uh, vase uh, where you see the human head representing the south, you know, in that uh, canoptic jar, you, will, you put the liver, and then you got the baboon, happy. This is where you place the lungs. Then you got Damutef. And then that, you place the stomach. And then you got Quebsenef, where you place the intestines. And so the, uh, the priests of Anubis were highly skilled surgeons. They were probably some of the best surgeons in all of ancient Egypt in respect of knowing the insides of the body. You see, knowing the inside, the Greeks and Romans, they, they were scared. They didn't know nothing about that until they come into Egypt. And so, it, you know, you're talking about the Egyptians have been doing this for five, 6,000 years before the Greeks and Romans were even known. So when you start talking about, you know, surgery and, you know, and this, that, and the third, brain surgery, heart surgery, and so on and so forth, all of this type. Of, uh, of advanced medicine was first practiced in ancient Egypt. You see here, you see Isis, and you see right there, you see Anubis again. And so that is, I believe, I believe that it is a, a depiction of Isis. I have to go back and check, but you see Anubis. And you also, you see Tut, and you see Isis is giving life, and then you see Anubis is right there as a also a, a, a guardian of the soul to make sure that, you know, that you receive your aunt, that you receive your blessings, and that your mouth will be open to speak in the next life. You see, you even see Seti. This is Seti right here in at Abydos. You see him right there giving homage and giving praise to the great deeds. And so family, when it comes to, you know, you got to be right now, you got to go ahead, you got to go ahead and when you, and, and make sure when you, you, you go and you get ready to take that, you know, that last 
you know, that last step on this planet that when you get ready to get on the other side, you make sure that you didn't, you didn't gave your veneration to the great God Anubis. I know a lot of people don't, you understand, they don't have no, uh, no belief in their own ancestors, you know, but for over three, four thousand years, you know, this is what our ancestors believe. It ain't a dog, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. You know what I'm saying? And in that spirit, you understand that the dog, even the dog, when he buries his bones, you know what I'm saying? He's highly skilled in burying them bones. And so this is one of the reasons why they connected Anubis to the system of embalming and burial. And so when you get ready to come into this, and you get ready to come into the gray hall of my eye, you better be right. You better be right and you better have Anubis on your side because if you do not have Anubis on your side, you ain't going to make it, family. So this is a, 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 a brief, and we'll be touching back on the Natters. We'll be talk, touching back on the Natters, but this was a brief overview of the great God Anubis. I want to thank y'all for being in the house today, family. We'll be touching on more and more other netters and intertwining them. And when I come back, I'm gonna have some more information on the great God and his connection to the other great gods. You see what I'm saying? So this this is the general Sarah soon said, he said, hey, arm yourself with knowledge, bang on that wicked ass beast daily, liberation through African education and confrontation, black power.